Good afternoon, uh, Winter Insight fans. Uh, today I am here with Cara Brown, who is uh, ex-British uh, skiing champion uh, of a few dis disciplines, and I'm sure she can talk us through those. Uh, now retired uh, and coaching alongside uh, some other activities, including uh, Coralina Swim, which is uh, Cara's own swimwear brand, which is fantastic, and VC Fitness that she started with a friend, which is really around uh, ski fitness, and there's various programs you can sign up to. So I hope I've got that mostly right. And uh, hi, Cara. Hi. <laughs> yeah, no, that I think that pretty much sums it up. That pretty much sums up the day job. I guess my full-time job was as a ski racer for the past eight years. Um, and then I retired uh, just a few, well, I retired just a few months ago, but I, the last time I raced was in January um, this year, or last year, rather, now that we're in 2021. So I guess a year ago, really. Um, and yeah, this winter I am coaching with the team that I actually used to train with, International Ski Racing Academy. And I'm based in Val di Fassa in Italy, which is where I'm very lucky to be right now. And I hate to tell you this all, but we've just had a big dump of snow. So yeah, everything's looking really nice and white. Um, and yeah, I've also got a little swimwear company that I started up three years ago, which I know doesn't really tie in with the skiing, but I think that's why I liked it so much was that it's like kind of completely the opposite from skiing. And when I needed a break, when, you know, races weren't going well and things, I could kind of go to the, the swimwear and escape to the Caribbean, I guess, in my mind. And um, plus you've still got to wear swimwear in the spa, right? After skiing in, well, not yeah, all countries, but some. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, not a lot. Unfortunately, not a lot of time for spas when you're a professional athlete, <laughs> as much as it seems really, yeah, not so much. But um, yeah, there's always, there's always an excuse for a new bikini. <laughs> that's, that's my motto anyway. And um, yeah, and then finally, the latest venture has been um, BC Ski Fitness, which I started up this summer um, with Vivian Fonseca, who's a personal trainer in the UK and one of the, actually one of the UK's top uh, functional fitness instructors. And we've kind of combined her fitness knowledge and my skiing knowledge to create workout programs that everyone can do um, at home to get ready for your ski holidays and get excited about skiing again. Amazing. So that's really the, the VC ski fitness vibe is about getting fit for skiing, right? Yeah. And I mean, hopefully also, I mean, I realize this year we're not really sure if people are going to get out to the slopes, but hopefully it's just a new and fun way to work out as well, rather than just your standard workout program, working out with a bit more of a, a purpose behind it, I guess. And it's probably okay. full with some new exercises that most people won't have seen before because they're exercises that I used to do as an athlete. Um, so yeah, hopefully some new things, but um will get people going even if it's even if they're stuck in their homes amazing yeah i mean we will touch on it a bit more i'm sure but i uh regularly see you know consumers who complain maybe their their ski boots ache or hurt or whatnot and and you say well, what have you done any fitness wise before you went away skiing <laughs> oh nothing oh uh, okay yeah. so if you went and ran 5k tomorrow would your legs ache a lot they'd be like yeah they would you know so yeah, exactly. yeah i think it's great to have a specific program of people skiing that just ultimately they'll enjoy their holiday more right yeah and especially because i mean time on snow is pretty precious at the moment hopefully then they can get the most out of the time they do have um and you know if it does unfortunately take until next season to get back on snow at least people won't have you know they can kind of brush off the two years worth of cobwebs at home before waiting for the first day of the holiday yeah, exactly. And maybe some of the uh, the moving ski slopes and dry slopes that kind of uh, indoor snow as well to keep the legs ticking over. But it's definitely a yeah, program with BC Ski Fitness is going to help, I think. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think it does. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we, we agree. And I think a lot of people do too from how it's launched, So, which is excellent. Um, yeah. So retired last January. So as you mentioned, a year since you last raced competitively. Why, why the retirement? You don't look particularly old to me, Cara. So, uh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, um, why the retirement? I guess it was quite, it was quite a long build up of reasons. Um, and ultimately it was sort of a, I will, I will always love skiing and I will always love ski racing and going through gates and all that bit. I just love, I would do it every single day for the rest of my life if I could, but it was the, the other side. So the competition side, I didn't have that same, I, I like winning a race didn't give me the same satisfaction that it used to and as well the all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes that people don't see so 
the fact that you know you're always in the gym and you're always doing your skis and you're always traveling you're like never at home I haven't been to like a family like wedding or birthday or you know anything in years and all that stuff it was just for me when you're when I was sort of you know I, I guess in, in my prime in skiing or it didn't matter that I was sacrificing all these things because winning the races was worth it and then it kind of I, I that sort of started to fade and then it actually all the it was not worth sacrificing all those things for the yeah for the race wins and ultimately that's what made me uh made me decide but it wasn't a decision that like I made in a couple of weeks it was like a three-year decision um and also I mean in a way my timing was good and it wasn't <laughs> because I hurt my well, I tore my ACL my second one in January and then like three weeks later everything got shut down because of COVID anyway so of course I would have loved to have ended my career like going back like another good season and going back to the British Championships and defending my titles. But, you know, it is what it is and almost better that it was through injury than through COVID. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, injury catches up with a lot of top athletes uh, in their fields and skiing is, uh, is no stranger to, to that, particularly with the knees. Uh, I mean, I've had three knee operations from to skiing, so I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, and I mean, in a way, I'm grateful that I can, despite, so I've had two ACLs and a broken leg, but I can still, you know, it's likely that, touch wood, <laughs> I'll, you know, from coming out of my career, I'll be able to ski for the rest of my life. You know, I'm not, I haven't broken my body to an extent where physically I can't ski and mentally I don't want to ski, so. Yeah, and, and, and like you said before, you ski because you love it, right? And as soon as you kind of lose that, that competitive edge, if you're just skiing for the sake of it, you'll lose the love of skiing, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, which is the last thing we want to do, right? We, uh, we all want to, want to love to ski. So coaching now, uh, you enjoy that? Uh, some days, yes. <laughs> it's, it's, very, it's very different. I mean, I'd already done a little bit of coaching when, when I was racing um, to kind of help earn some money for my skiing. I went and did the odd week here and there, um, but it's very different doing it full time um there's a lot that goes on that as a racer you don't think goes on you're just like oh they just turn up and put some gates up and away you go <laughs> whereas actually like you know it's like it's non-stop there's constantly things to be organized and you're constantly looking ahead to the races and wondering what's the best thing for your athletes and um yeah so it's it's tough it's really hard work um but for sure it's great to see that when the girls have a good day skiing i'm, I'm just coaching female athletes it's great to see when they you know have a good day's training and then we haven't got there yet but hopefully they'll produce it in some races um in january <laughs> so is you do you say you respect your coaches a little bit more now that you're on the other side of the fence yeah probably but i think i was i i think i always i hope i always respected my coaches anyway um i'm sure there were times when i was an absolute nightmare but um, <laughs> yeah no definitely i can see why I can see why sometimes they were in a bad mood. <laughs> yeah, okay. <Right. laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, it's always good to get that. It's like uh, the parent kid type thing, right? Is that until you've been a, until you are a parent, you don't understand it because you're a kid and you think, well, I don't get it. Why do parents do that? You know? Yeah, definitely. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's obviously great that you're, you're still out involved in it, the scene and racing and coaching. Is that, your career path now or have you got a few other uh things up your sleeve obviously with the other two businesses but what what, what does the next 12 months look like for you Carla? <laughs> that is i think that's COVID, COVID, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um well i mean i i really don't know because it's my coaching was actually not my current plan either um okay. my plan was to go and work on sailing boats in the caribbean so that kind of got stuffed with COVID. I had a, um, I was, I've been building up to my sailing license over the last three years. And so that kind of ties in with the bikinis as well, I guess, cause I'm I really like sailing. And um, yeah, so, and I had a job offer out in the British Virgin Islands for this winter. And then obviously everything just fell through with COVID. So I'm, I'm just keeping really open-minded for the next 12 months. And I kind of have this sense of freedom that as an athlete I never had because skiing was always the priority. Whereas now I'm just like, and I mean, until COVID stuffed it, obviously, I was like, I can do anything. And then COVID yeah. came along, and I was like, I can do nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, although you are in a beautiful backdrop and skiing most days, I believe, still at the moment. So you are in a yeah. better than some, right? 
no no definitely i'm definitely very appreciative that we can we can come out here and the regulations are tightening in more and more every day but we're just we're keeping in our very small bubble and it's yeah we get to go up on the hill and it's i mean it's just us on the hill which for you know it's a dream for most people i think um we get the mountain to ourselves so yeah it's been really great and it's nice to see actually the the a lot of the locals come up and they're all out touring so none of they're not allowed to get on the lifts the lifts aren't operating for them but they can tour up the slopes and everything and it's actually been really cool seeing the amount of um the amount of people getting out and active like out with their kids on their snowshoes and ski touring and just finding other ways to enjoy the mountains as well yeah that's amazing and i think you, yeah. we all know in the, the the ski and snowboard world that the touring side of the market's been one of the fastest growing elements of uh, skiing and snowboarding and so if this kind of gets more people into it or at least trying it out as well and um yeah you know, definitely um, yeah uh, I, I, I never really got touring when I was younger and then I went and did it for a day and I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, and as you get older, it gets, a li you know, like running longer distances gets better when you're older because you're... Uh, yeah, you're I, exactly. So, yeah, my parents are really keen ski tourers and they always go and do these crazy trips like to Siberia and like way up in northern Canada and all these things. And I'm just like, why would you do that? I want to go down the hill. I don't want to go up the hill. And then but I started touring last January, actually as a thing to kind of like give my mind a break from from ski racing just because we get like you're just living in your one little apartment with your teammates and some and you don't really get any alone time i guess okay. and so just to give my mind a break i would do it and uh yeah i really enjoyed it although i'm like i'm not quite ready for siberia i'm just like <laughs> an hour up and down is fine for me <laughs> yeah i mean i must admit i only really i haven't done too many day tours recently it's more about the up for the down so um... yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i'm still in that still in that circle i'm not quite the uh well i really want to do the hope route for fun every week <laughs> not quite yeah. there. <laughs> no not yet oh perfect so um you're obviously in italy now as you've mentioned you've been skiing and the lifts are closed to uh obviously locals and uh, tourists as you've mentioned what what's the current situation out there uh, as of today so as of today, we are on, um, so the Italians have like a special set of rules in until the 6th of January that stopped Italians going abroad for Christmas holidays. So um, you basically cannot leave your house um, unless it's work, health or an emergency. And um, no, there's no mingling. You're not allowed into other people's houses at all. Uh, we wear our masks everywhere. So like if I was down on the street there, even if there was nobody around, I have to wear my mask. Um, which is the same on the hill actually like as a coach I'm wearing my mask all day and for athletes the only time they take their mask off is when they're skiing down the course um, so they're really strict with that and then but we just got and so on the 6th after the 6th we're not really sure what the rules are going to do yet when are the local ski lifts going to be open for the locals and tourists so we heard good news yesterday that they are hopefully opening on the 18th of January so basically they put everything in place such that they could open on the 18th of January but they haven't said they are going to open on the 18th of January um, but it's like a high possibility I would say unless like a, you know, a new variant appears or something like that. And is there concerns that because this happened originally when they first tried to open the resorts that the day they open people will just go crazy and just flood towards the resorts? I mean, I think there will be a little bit of that, but we also have a system in Italy, which I think you have in the UK too, where you can't leave certain zones to go into other zones. Um, and they're actually really strict with it. There's quite a lot of police checks out and you have to have a form with you everywhere you go saying why you're going. So even though they open the resorts, that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be allowed to leave your town um, to come to the resorts. Because for example, I live in Northern Italy by Milan, and I live in a little town of 5,000 people and my parents live there too and they haven't been allowed to leave the town except to go to the supermarket for about two months now. So they've been trapped in their village. Um, they're just not allowed to leave. So we'll just have to wait and see if they make it. Um, yeah, if they allow people to come up. Hopefully they do so everyone can come and enjoy the mountains. Okay, great. And how do you feel as a, as a country Italy is coping in general? I mean, it was one of the the centers of the kind of outbreak i was there leaving italy when it all happened how, how has it coped as a country in general i think i mean i think 
to begin with, they got a really big shock, like a really nasty shock and learn obviously a really hard lesson. Um, I think those um, images of, you know, the body trucks lined up in the streets of Bergamo are like etched in every Italian's mind. Um, but I think actually in general, the Italians are doing a really good job. I think everything, I mean, everything their government's put out to me seems pretty sensible and they're, whatever says goes, like it, there's not really an argument with it. It's like, you know, back in March or whenever they were like, start wearing masks. And so everybody wears their masks. And then it's like, you're not allowed to leave your village. People don't leave their village. And it just see, they just seem to be taking it all on board. And yeah, they're all fed up of it. <laughs> and um, for sure, you know, as soon as I'm in the supermarket, I can see like, you know, the, the little locals, like either end of the aisle, like shouting at each other down the aisle, like, this is rubbish. I want to come over for tea and, you know, all these things. But I do think that everybody's abiding by it pretty well. And yeah, I mean, I know a few people in the UK are like, oh, it's, I've heard like friends of mine are like, oh, it's so unfair. All the Italians can go skiing. Like the Italians can't go skiing. They're all locked in their houses. Um, having to look at it every day so that's almost worse like my neighbor here he can't go skiing and he has to watch me go skiing every morning so they're having a pretty rough time of it all too yeah i can imagine i mean it's um yeah. <laughs> well it, it is what it is right and it's good to know that from your perspective that, that seems to be being handled quite well out there i think it's of interest to people in this country that want to go skiing or snowboarding because uh they'll only be able to based on how well those areas uh, control this, uh, this, this, this disease yeah. or whatever yeah. it is. So, okay, perfect. So anyway, um, I know enough about skiing really. Uh, I mean, you're in the Alps, people who are watching this are just gonna be like, I just wish I was there. So, you know, like you just said, the FOMO, um, of kind of not being able to ski, just like your neighbor. So we don't want to get too many people into that train of thought. So I think, I'd like to ask you a little bit about VC Ski Fitness and how that came about and what the future of that is. Yeah, so I was in London last summer, which was very unfamiliar for me because it's a city with concrete and skyscrapers, which is not usually where I am. And um, after lockdown, I was just desperate to get out of the house and do something, and like most people, I think. And so I started doing um, some fitness training for a young ski racer in London that I know. And uh, we just did it um, in the parks and stuff and so and um then he he really enjoyed the sessions and then i thought oh well maybe i'll advertise doing ski fitness training um because i did my fitness qualification uh, my fitness trainer qualification maybe 10 years ago and i've never used it but obviously it came in handy as a skier um and yeah so i advertised it and expected you know to get a couple of people back and then ended up getting like 15 clients and spent my whole summer cycling all over London like to parks to do sessions with people which was amazing um and some were skiers and some weren't even skiers they just liked doing different exercises um and then through that through sort of fitness circles I met Vivian um who yeah I said it's one of the UK's instructors and she's been in the industry for 20 years she like I call her Google for exercises because she like anything anything you need this woman knows her stuff she had some private clients that were keen skiers and wanted to get fit for their ski holidays but she's not a skier so she was like oh could we meet up and you know maybe just discuss a bit about skiing and fitness and um i think in one meeting we were like oh let's make this into a program and sell it like we have something here that's there's a gap in the market nobody else has a program like ours um so that's what we did and well, I think we had that conversation in July and then we launched in October. So it was all pretty, pretty fast. Um, yeah. But yeah, we just took her, her fitness brain and my skiing brain and um, stuck it all together and made, made our workouts. That's amazing. So um, where, where can people find out more information about that? Um, so on our website, which is vcskifitness.com, we have three different packages. So fundamentals, intermediate, advanced, depending on your level of skiing or how long it's been since you were last skiing or even just whichever one you feel comfortable at. Like our fundamentals package is designed that it's beneficial to even somebody that's been skiing for years because it really fine tunes little things like your stance on your skis and then it activates all your strength muscles or the specific muscles that you need for skiing. Um, all the way up to the advanced level, which then includes workouts that I did as an athlete and has got some quite specific skiing technique things um, that most people don't have heard of because they're probably more racer-ish. Um, 
technique as opposed to like the ones that your ski instructor will tell you um, and it's kind of designed as like the, the program that's going to get you to like catching up with the pros um, I guess and uh, yeah so that's all on the website and then we also have our um, Instagram and Facebook BC Ski Fitness. Um, Perfect. <laughs> it sounds amazing I think you know I mentioned earlier that the ski fitness side people don't get ski fit even and even people who are maybe relatively fit go to the gym do some exercises and running then come to skiing and they find that their their elasticity in their muscles is not good enough so the calves are aching when they ski or it's making them go more back seat because they're getting tired etc so, and then their feet hurt more and then they want to stop and then they you know all the problems occur so i think uh, anything that prevents that or reduces uh, that is is a great thing um so yeah, I'm really, I'm really pleased that you've launched something like that. And I, I believe Ellis Brigham, as a, re, as a UK-wide retailer, launched that with you as well, right? Yeah, so we did some live workouts with Ellis Brigham. So actually, if people want to try our workouts, they're all recorded on the Ellis Brigham YouTube channel. And you can just go in there for free, and they'll be up there for an unlimited amount of time. So you can watch them as many times as you like. And um, we did a series of five workouts building up. Um, do various bits of technique and then targeting some ski specific stuff and they're kind of like a little snippet of what you can get in our program. Perfect. I'll put the link to the Ellis Brigham free uh, VC, skitness, uh, VC ski fitness videos uh, on the bottom of this uh, on the bottom of this video. So no problem. Um, so we'll pop that on there. And so coaching now, VC ski, ski fitness that was set up, Coralina Swimwear you've had for a little while, uh, which is obviously uh, something a little bit separate and I guess linked to the sailing that you mentioned that you'd like to go and do um, when, when the, the world gets back to some kind of normality. So it sounds like you've got a lot going on, Car, which is great. Is there, for me, uh, I, I love skiing, I love watching ski and ski races, I've skied with some amazing skiers like yourself as well and what I like to know is who are your favourite skiers? Well, my favorite ski racer um, is probably Lindsay Vaughn, who retired uh, last year, um, which is an American ski racer. And um, coincidentally, actually coached by my coaches, who are no longer my coaches, they're now my bosses. Um, <laughs> as well. And I mean, she's just a really, like, such an impressive skier, and especially like, the amount of time she came back from injury, um, and then just seems like a really lovely person as well. Um, so in the ski racing world, that's probably definitely my idol. Um, I think in general, anyone that's like, every time I've been coaching with younger kids, because the girls I coach now are, you know, 18 to, or 16 to 25. But whenever I'm with younger kids, sort of 10, 11 year olds, any kid that is just like, they go out skiing and then they come in and they've got this smile plastered on their face and you can't even get them to come in because they're like, another run, another run. Like any of those kids are people that I idolize because I just think that's so cool. But like, I just think, yeah, I think it's so great that somebody goes out and enjoys the mountains and loves skiing and just wants to, just wants to throw themselves at it. So any, any of those people. And actually, having said that, I've only seen it in kids. But I mean, mega kudos to anyone who is not a kid and decides to go and throw themselves down a mountain for the first time. That's probably even more impressive. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I I agree actually. So I, I've got a lot of adult friends who I've had join us on ski holidays and try and get into skiing over the years, and I have quite a bit of respect for those guys because I don't remember learning to ski, and I can imagine like trying to learn some new things that I tried to learn as an adult. Because that was skiing. If you were cool. Well, look, if you could ski one day with one person, though. Uh, one person the whole world for one day it doesn't have to be a skier it could be anybody who, who would it be go, i'd go ski with my parents i didn't i didn't get much chance to ski with them all those years so probably with my parents and with my friends that oh, that's lovely there you go perfect a oh, great answer anyway <laughs> so anyway thank you so much for your time today cara i'm gonna let you go now um thanks for giving us some insight into you know being a ski racer and what retirement means and, and why that comes along maybe sometime sooner rather than later and um i think we will see a bit more of you on winter insight hopefully with some uh, some content as well but um yeah we'd love to hear a bit more from you and see what you're up to and uh, and wish you the best of luck for the rest of the winter 
it's been really nice to be on and share share my story. So thank you very much. No problem. You're welcome. And we'll see speak to you soon, Cara. Stay safe. Okay. Bye.